This video is sponsored by no one. The sponsored opt out at the last second. So you know what? Like and subscribe for the algorithm. Let's make them regret it. in the morning but today is a different day so I said heck why not I've been trying to get back into coding apps for the iPhone, trying to spend some serious time getting back into the groove of things, you know, relearning Xcode, Swift, brushing up on my object-oriented programming skills. If you've watched my M2 Mac mini review for programmers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Today's the day for me to spend some of my time coding, something I've been doing with my MacBooks for quite a long time. And although I think the M2 Pro is overkill for most things web development, I think it's the perfect machine for mobile development. I've never had any issues running my emulators, IntelliSense on Xcode is incredibly quick, building my projects takes like 2 seconds, like the whole experience is fantastic no matter what you decide to throw at it. And yes, yes, I mainly use this with my Gigabyte monitor when I'm coding. I do like having more screen real estate than just 14 inches. Pro tip, if you set up your whole workflow properly, with one single cable you can connect your keyboard, your mouse, webcam, monitor, audio setup, and a whole dock for your SD cards and peripherals. Now, I do recommend you get a high refresh monitor because coming from a mini LED that outputs ProMotion and going into a panel that caps at like 60 hertz can be annoying. So I do enjoy going through code at 144 hertz, especially when I'm mostly writing code for my programmatic views. Oh, by the way, M2 Pro now has HDMI 2.1, so you don't need the whole Thunderbolt setup like I have to output 4K at 144 hertz. You only need one HDMI cable. But yeah, recently I've been trying to find tutorials that mainly teach you how to create views without storyboards, and because you tend to write a lot of code and go through a lot of code for the simplest of things, I find it's been more pleasant doing it with a high refresh panel. Anyways, my journey hopping back into iOS development on a machine like this has been fantastic. Eventually, I'm going to go back to Node.js to write full stack applications. And don't worry, writing backend code on this MacBook will be a breeze. No need to worry about Docker containers not running properly. I mean, Docker definitely has issues on Apple Silicon. However, it keeps getting better with time. You just need to put a little more effort into getting things to work, but it's doable. Really gotta go meet Jen. Get this desk set up, makeover started. By the way, best bag, like best bag. Actually, I need a keys, a watch. All right. Really, I don't understand this weather. It was supposed to pour rain today, and it's not. Yo, I cannot believe this weather, man. It's really funny the fact that I spent two hours writing so much code and trying to understand so much code for only that. It's pretty funny, right? Like, But the thing is that when you're learning code, you really want to understand everything. You just don't want to copy a tutorial and just like, that's it. You don't want to just copy and paste code. You have to understand what you're writing and I've been really trying to dive deep into Swift and like understanding cues, dispatch, memory leaks and things like that so it takes me so long. It's not a race for me, I'm not in a hurry so I just take my time. But now fam it's not time to take the time because I really need to start shopping for the desktop makeover that's coming at the end of this month and that's gonna take a while you know to get this stuff 
shipped and things like that. So, yep. So yeah, my life as an ex-software engineer has completely changed. I don't find myself making YouTube videos for a living, doing makeovers, trying to get into real estate. I think I like the whole concept of making renovations. Mm, when I was cutting that pegboard two episodes ago, I forgot to isolate the metal part from the plug. Imagine how much I would have cooked myself. Go read the comments. But the skills of coding should never be forgotten. Although when I'm not coding in this machine, I'm doing other stuff like research, for example. I spend quite a lot of time planning the videos, using Notion to script them. And of course, when we are doing makeovers, we use Milanote. Milanote is basically a tool that allows you to organize ideas and projects into visual boards. And it's cool because you can almost make a whole storyboard with it. Meanwhile, on Notion, it's where I just like planning my life. I plan my expenses, video ideas, budgets, track my spending, and so on. I guess what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to our desk setup makeover videos, these two apps really go hand in hand together. Oh, and ChatGPT as well. I've been using it quite a lot lately. As you can see, I've typed quite some on my account and I've also typed a lot on this MacBook keyboard. It's very much the same keyboard that my M1 Pro has, which as you can see, has been aging quite well. It feels great to type on. The mechanical stabilizers beneath each key makes the scissor switch feel like no other laptop keyboard out there. But I do think the most important fact, other than knowing that this feels great, it's knowing that it will age properly and the same goes for the trackpad purposely for the sake of the channel i don't take care of my macbooks anymore meaning that i don't baby these the way i used to before i started this whole youtube journey like literally it reflects on the way i've been treating the chassis of the m1 pro why do i do that you might ask well i really want to see how much i can push this and do my own quality control so i can give you guys proper feedback so honestly Considering how well the M1 Pro chassis has been able to keep up after a year's worth of use, I know the M2 Pro won't be any different. So what you got finally? I said I did the, the mock-up of the basement just so we can get like a rough estimate. Okay. Let's say we move the accent chair here. Okay, we'll have like a space for like maybe a side or like a lamp. Oh, yeah. A lot of places are made to order, which takes either, they either made to order or out of stock. Mobilia or EQ3? This is EQ3. Okay, yeah. So EQ we can drive oh, down yeah. the EQ3 in the city, and there's a lot of nice local spots. <laughs> you got it? Bro, this morning wasn't raining, and now I got in the car, it was sunny. I need help! You guys can say hi to the day in the lab. Hello, my friends. Hey, hey guys, Jen here. <laughs> Okay, so plan right now. We're going downtown to try to find some shops where we can get, what, like at least a sofa, coffee table, and something like that. That's not like incredibly out of the budget. We're going to EQ3 first, and then the other stores are uh, pretty expensive, but I'm sure we'll find like some nice stuff there. Okay, well, first stop, EQ3, and then I actually saw a really nice store in the back. I'm a bit scared of prices, to be honest with you guys. Sure you don't, you didn't want an umbrella? There you go, EQ3. Oh, a Eurus. My God, look at that. Yes, sir. Back to you. Thank you, bro. Yo, this is sick. Yo, this whole set is sick. Yeah, seriously, just Oh, so that means it's in stock? Oh my God, yo. I like the color. The rug is cool and the wood is nice. I think they have Herman Miller stuff here. Yeah, that's Yo, this is nice too. Whatever this is looks nice. Oh my god, this sofa looks nice. Oh yeah. This is sick. Bro, did you see this coffee thing? Herman Miller? Oh, it's only 2.7. <laughs> I think this rug might be a good choice. I just don't know how much they are now. How much? Yeah, I, I figured 700 for the smallest rug. Of course, of course. This is so nice, like so minimal, very clean. It sort of reminds me a lot of all year. Like if you're watching this, bro, this reminds me a lot of your house, but it's very minimal, very clean. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, the prices. Don't, don't look at the camera. Don't look at the camera. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's not fine. It's, I didn't like it anyway. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's ugly anyways. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I feel a bit undefeated with the prices, but now that I'm thinking about it, the main things we have to get is like a sofa, the coffee, the coffee table, TV set unit, the desk, so we can like really allocate a good amount of budget into that and not have to worry about running out of budget for the rest of the things. I think it'll make sense. I really want the space to look really, really, really cool. So I might bite the bullet. Well, we're not even gonna bother. Now it's not raining. <laughs> it's a whole different day. Bro. This is insane. So I guess we're not gonna bother with... Nah, those artisanal... Yeah, the other artis artisanal stores are just gonna be so expensive. So, we have another choice, which is must. Yeah. And I guess that's it. Yeah. Must IKEA EQ3. Yeah. We'll scratch all the other stores. Yeah. So we'll go with EQ3, yeah. IKEA, and must. Other than using Notion and Milano to plan my life and work, I often find myself using my MacBook as my portable editing machine. I mean, it's the laptop we brought to New York for the Bose event, Las Vegas for CES. In my opinion, there is nothing like having a really powerful 14 inch laptop at all times with you. The fact that this is so portable and it allows you to get all of your media work done is fantastic. I also rarely carry a dongle with me because of all the ports, like the fact I can take my SD card and plug it in directly into the machine is great. It allows me to hop on Lightroom and edit my pictures super quickly, especially my posts for Instagram and other content I post on Twitter. We shot with an A7 Mark IV earlier before and Lightroom on the M2 Pro has absolutely no issues when it comes to handling our editing. I do suggest you sort of carry a mouse with you if possible. The Orochi V2 for example is a great one. Editing any sort of content on the trackpad is a pain in the you know what but I suggest to be mindful of that. Up to now honestly, with a Bluetooth mouse connected and my AirPods Max, Bluetooth connectivity has been more reliable than my M1 Pro. I mean, going from Bluetooth 5.0 to Bluetooth 5.4 is definitely a massive jump and it explains why the connections are more reliable. I don't suffer from any weird latency issues and connections being dropped here and there. Not that it was a big issue on the M1 Pro, but it happened at times. Okay, so I think we're getting somewhere in terms of budgets. Um, that croissant wasn't enough, so I think we're gonna head somewhere to eat. But I'm pretty happy with the progress up to now. I swear to God, you guys would never believe the fact that this video was filmed on the same day because what? Is, like what? It was pouring rain when we got here, and now it's sunny. Anyways, right now we're gonna go to the condo because John's gonna help me install the Hue light strip and he's gonna help me install the Sonos bar. That's for next week's video. So we have to unmount the TV. Am I moving? We have to start the light strip. Oh, oh, don't move. Brought the cables from the arc. But you're not in at all. And the light strips through the wall. From all the way up. And then put it back up. Are you in? That's what she said. Do you know what we have to get? What? The little carry-ons when we travel with the scooter one. Oh, that exists? Yeah, it's crazy. Wait, you're just like this. <laughs> okay, I'll show you what we got. See, so this is what it got. The arc and the hues. It's a really big mess. I'm like scared that... Where does it go? I'm thinking of putting it right here. Yeah, when I'm not using my S23 Ultra, I really do use my MacBooks for everything else, including the most mindless things like a tutorial. I actually got these Hue Green light strips last week and installing these is a two-man job. I do have these on our LG C1 at the office, but I forgot how to install them properly. I just needed a quick little refresh to make sure I don't ruin it. Okay, well, anyone could have figured this out. Well, we're gonna install this whole thing. I hope it's not too bad. I mean, the gap behind the TV is it's pretty slim so we're gonna have to unmount it I'm gonna put a podcast while we're doing this whole thing the speakers on this are fantastic I most often use it as a standalone unit when listening to a podcast like I don't need to connect my Sonos room is what I mean because the speakers on the MacBooks especially the pros have always been great it's one of those things that no matter after how long you've owned the machine for you're always amazed like the bass is rich the mids are clear and the highs are just perfect in my opinion it can fill my living room quite well now after installing the hue strips on the TV we ended up needing 
needing to pass all the necessary cables behind the wall to connect the hue strip and the Sonos bar to the TV. I really wanted to have the most minimal cozy living room setup and so this meant making sure the cable management was impeccable. I mean the whole setup actually turned out really nice. It's a two man job by the way which is why I brought Jan with me. Well I have a problem of this cable right here is not long enough to power the strips which really sucks so now I have to just buy an extension cord to be able to make this cable just a tiny bit longer and then it should all work out but yeah that really sucks at least battery life doesn't suck since I left the condo this morning I've been dependent on battery life just to give you some perspective, we were at 100% at around 10.30 a.m. And we now are at 58% and it's currently 6.30 p.m. Battery life on this is phenomenal, just like the M1 Pro. Honestly, I never find myself needing more juice than what it can offer. I'm just gonna go get my car, come back home, do a bit more work, eat, and call it a night. What a day fam, and it's already seven. I'm actually going to shower, eat, and then probably code or show you guys a bit around my Mac OS and show you the apps I actually use often. At 8 p.m. on days like these, I usually like to hop back on code or check my emails. Superhuman is one of those apps that really allow me to get my emailing done. They did sponsor one of our videos a while ago and ever since I haven't stopped using it. It's one of those apps I strongly suggest aside from Milanote and Notion. Other apps I also heavily suggest getting are Clean My Mac, Paste, Numi, and for you programmers out there, iTerm2. Of course, there are other apps out there I use a lot, but I think these are four of my biggest recommendations up to date. They overall really allow me to keep my whole workflow clean and efficient. Like, Clean My Mac keeps my MacBook secured and free of clutter. Paste is excellent for when you want to organize your copy and paste into snippets, basically a clipboard manager for your copy and pasting, and Numi which is a really cool lightweight calculator that is able to do a lot more than simple arithmetic. You can download Numi CLI if you prefer using it on iTerm2 for these type of things, but I suggest you use their UI instead. You need to use something like a delegate pattern to actually inform you, hey, you should no, what the touch New delicate pattern. Hmm. A few moments later. I think I'm off for today. I might go enjoy the new living room. There's this show I've been watching called The Rabbit Hole. Massive recommendation. And on these Sono speakers, I think it's gonna be pretty good. I hope this day in the life gives you a bit of an insight of what the MacBook is realistically capable of doing. It's such a great device, great recommendation, and it's the laptop for everyone really. Not everyone will get their money's worth, but it's the laptop that can very much supply most people's needs. Okay, I'm off to bed fam. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you all soon and good night.